Hi guys, Jonathan here, and I've got another gun for you, as you probably guessed. And it's the Not Bren gun. Also known as the Vickers Class L, also known as the uh, Vickers Gas Operated, sorry, Vickers Light Gas Operated Machine Gun, also known as the Vickers Bertier. Um, now, before we get into this, there are a couple of very good videos on this already, um, or this type. Forgotten Weapons has more than one, including a shooting video, and Richard Fisher over at the Vickers Machine Gun um, Collection and Research Association has another fairly you know, longer form video talking about the Vickers Bertier. Both of those videos are feature the more common Vickers Bertier, which is the version adopted by the Indian Army in 1933. Um, almost halfway little more than halfway through the British trials that I'm about to talk about in a bit more detail. This is in fact a gun from the first British trial that led to the Bren gun. That's, that's the most significant aspect about this gun is that it lost. <laughs> um, this, uh, this was, um, the, the Vickers Bertier was, a, was uh, evolved, improved upon throughout those several years of trials. This is the version that first went up against the ZB27, which is um, an earlier predecessor of what became the British Bren gun, which is, of course, a Czech design uh, by Mr. Holek. So this is the, to be fair to the Vickers Bertier, there were several other guns involved in the trial, including the French Darn, a uh, Swiss gun. Those fell away in 1930. This thing soldiered on. And the Vickers Company, yes, that Vickers Company, um, wanting a light machine gun stable mate for their famous heavy machine gun, the Vickers, or Vickers Maxim, as it was originally known, they had high hopes that this would be adopted by the British forces and hopefully by Commonwealth forces as well. In the event, it didn't work out that way. So a very um, historic piece. We have several Vickers Bertiers in the collection. This is the earliest of the British trials guns. Uh, it differs from the later adopted by the Indians version. It's still got fluted barrel, as did the Bren's predecessor at that time. Um, different sighting arrangements. It's got a, a very Bren, Br Mark I Bren-esque rear drum for adjusting the rear sight. Let's see it there. And as I, as I turn it, I'm trying to get my fingers out of the camera's way, it's a simple rack and pinion, and it's just shoving that rear sight up into the air. Quite a simple mechanism, actually. Um, the selector is notably different from the adopted Indian Vickers Bertier as well. It's a simple lever, albeit not very positive. Three positions from safe at the bottom to semi-automatic in the middle, if you can find the right position, and then all the way up for full auto. Um, just about every detail of it did change in, over time, but it's pretty close to, to, the, to the final version, and indeed to the earlier version. So Vickers Bertier bought the rights in, uh, sources differ on this, 1918 or 1925 for uh, a fair bit of money, and then spent even more money developing it into a gun that they were happy with, which they were by 1929. So this is effectively a 1929 model Vickers Bertier. Bertier, yes, that Bertier, um, the one who invented the rifle, the French uh, cavalry carbine and later um, infantry rifle, three round internal, uh, three round magazine. That's him. Um, he went on to design the predecessor of this and then as noted, Vickers took it, effectively took it over as a, as a commercial thing and they had a big eye on Board of Ordnance contracts. Uh, so this and the Bren were pretty much neck and neck in that 1930 trial that this gun was involved in shooting. Um, it's always especially fun to be holding a gun that, where you know what it, what it did. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, the gap kind of widened later on. So the other, the other um, guns being trialled, uh, the French Darn, there was the uh, Swiss... Uh, uh, Kerali Ender, is the correct, is it, if that's the correct name. They kind of fell away in 1930, but then we had four years of 
shoot-offs, essentially, between the Vickers Bertier and the Bren. And, of course, we know the result of that. Um, the final big trial, late 1934, was a 50,000 round endurance trial. But it wasn't just endurance. It also it assessed other aspects as well, including accuracy. Um, and as well as being fi found to be less robust than the, I'm going to call it the Bren, because it wasn't called the Bren yet, but it, it's the Bren. So more parts breakages. This was also found to be substantially less accurate on automatic. Not, not hugely worse in terms of accuracy on semi-automatic, although it was a bit worse, but significantly worse. Uh, Two-thirds larger group size on average than the, uh, than the Bren. Now, the Bren um, is almost uh, mythological for being highly accurate. Um, it's not the only machine, light machine gun that's capable of, of, of the accuracy that it was capable of, but for the time it was a very accurate light machine gun, and it beat the Vickers Bertier on that and on reliability, robustness. So despite the, the apparent failings of the Vickers Bertier and all of the many differences that we, you, you could um, look into on this, they really are quite similar and it's a bit of convergent design. You know, um, they're both trying to achieve the same thing, a lightweight, gas-operated light machine gun. Meaning you don't want belt feed, meaning you want a magazine feed, and if you're going to be firing it from the ground, a top-mounted magazine makes sense. If your main customer wants it in 303, which creates a very steep tapered magazine, your magazine ends up steeply tapered, curved rather. Um, gas operation with a long stroke piston, you either have to put the piston on the top or the piston on the bottom, and they both went for the piston on the bottom. You need a flash hider of some kind, so you get a cone on the end. Because of the magazine, the sights have to be offset to the left, so the sights are on the left. And your general configuration ends up being quite similar. Um, it's a little bit like when two Hollywood movies on the same subject come out, and <laughs> it's usually just a coincidence. Not to say that firearms designers don't bother for, borrow from each other, but um, in this case, I think it really is convergent design. One final word on the gun itself, just to demonstrate how compact this could be relative to the Bren, which would have been a minor selling point. So we've got, we've got the um, rear monopod, which slides up into there and is adjustable by twisting. You press that button and pop that off. I dare say for cost and uh, expedient reasons that would have been deleted as the rear monopod, or the rear handle, sorry, on the Bren was as well. So if you remove that, if you fold up your bipod legs, which of course you would for any kind of movement or well, transport, you then palm off your magazine just like you do on the Bren. This is quite an interesting system. So we've got this gigantic magazine release paddle and you might be thinking, well that's far too easily hit by accident when you're running around. And actually, I think it would have been. Um, but I'm not an Indian Army soldier, so um, take, take that comment with a, a pinch of salt. Um, this does allow you to seal up the gun pr quite nicely for transport. So this cover, obviously the Bren has a sliding cover instead. So we have a, a, a pivoting cover that actually latches in underneath what is actually the magazine catch. So the magazine catch is a, is a sliding piece here, spring-loaded, actuated by this flap, which stays put and clicks down into place out of the way. So for actual carriage, or for stowing on a vehicle or a pack mule or something, um, this was actually a very svelte little package for what it's worth. I mean, the, clearly the, tri the trials did not find that that was in any way an advantage and just carry a bigger, chunkier, one pound heavier gun because the Bren did weigh a full pound more than this. But to be honest with you, having he hefted both for a while, um, I don't think you'd tell the difference. What's a pound between friends? Um, these early, the uh, difference Another difference with the early Vickers Bertier that entered, as it entered the 1930 trial is this chunky wooden forend, which was abandoned later on, saves a bit of weight. You don't 
really need to hold the gun like this unless you're trying to shoot it from the hip or something, which was to be discouraged, although it was done with the Bren. But to do that, you would need a carrying handle on, on the barrel, which this also got later on. So this version doesn't have the carrying handle. Uh, it's got the early fluted barrel, the, the ZGB and its predecessors. Uh, sorry, the, the um, ZB, ZB26 had a fluted barrel. That was um, done away with as it was on the Vickers Bertier as a result of the trials process. It didn't, for, with both guns, it didn't reduce the heat enough to be worth the extra cost, basically. So that's another difference. If you look at a, an Indian Vickers Bertier, you'll see a smooth barrel. And of course the markings differ as well. So instead of the Royal Cipher GRI for Georges Rex Imperator, um, King George and Emperor of India, essentially, we simply have Vickers Bertier and then the serial number. Now, of course, if this had seen British adoption, it would have received British service markings. So a, an immediate ancestor of the Indian Vickers Bertier, which is an important Second World War machine gun in its own right, and very significant in terms of British light machine guns and the association with um, the original French version of the gun. So a bit, perhaps a bit of a footnote in the history of Second World War firearms, but a really interesting one, I think. And I hope you do too. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. Join us again next time for another uh, peek into the stores here at the Royal Armouries. If you'd like to support the work that we do here, there are, as always, links in the description that will help you do that, but um, no pressure. And we are very happy if you watch the videos and do all the YouTube things, subscribing, liking, and all of that. You can also go and check out, if you like gaming at all, um, I do a series with the GameSpot website on YouTube as well. So check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, stay tuned, and we'll see you next week.